this is Ruben from Dutch Round 1. Thanks again for stopping by, for watching another video. I appreciate the interest and I appreciate the support. Today we are going to do something else. Today it won't be vocabulary, it won't be listening, it won't be reading exercises, um, it won't be grammar. Today we are going to take a look at 25 funny and weird sounding words in the Dutch language. So basically how we will do it, well you see the slide, we'll speak a little bit about the word and you'll, I'm sure you'll understand why they're funny and sometimes also a little bit weird. But before we do that, remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want uh, more content and please let me know in the comments what you are struggling with and this way I can make a video and make your life uh, easier. Now, before we go to the slides, um, I just want to explain to you that Belgium is quite famous for its beer and the Netherlands are quite famous for, of course, legalizing weed, legalizing marijuana. So, I don't really know the exact eto etymology, so basically the origin of um, where the words come from, but I think these two things had something to do with the creation of the following words which you're about to see. Well, the first one we are going to take a look at is ape trots. Ape trots. Trots means proud and ape means ape or monkey. So, proud like a monkey. I am monkey proud of you. I am ape proud of you. What does that mean? Well, basically we use that word ape trots. Ik ben ape trots op jou. That basically means if you're really um, proud of somebody. Um, then you can say ik ben trots, uh, ik ben ape trots op, op jou or basically when somebody is behaving quite proud uh, because he, he won, I don't know, a football match uh, then you can also say hij is ape trots he is monkey proud All right, that is the first one we go to the next one the next one is bebbergeld now I have to admit bebbergeld is quite Flemish um, in the Netherlands they um, maybe will call it gevaren toeslag but in uh, Belgium, in Flemish, we call it bebbergeld. Now, geld is money. And then bebberen uh, is to shiver. Now, shivering money. What does this mean exactly? Well, shivering money is basically, or bebbergeld, <laughs> better. Uh, bebbergeld is when you have to do a job which is quite dangerous. Uh, like, for instance, a prison guard um, works in prison and he gets like an extra bonus uh, because his job is a little bit dangerous or somebody who works uh, on roofs or on uh, apartment blocks, uh, works at great heights, um, he gets better health uh, because his job has a little bit of danger. Alright, so that is our shivering money, that is our better health. Now, the next one is snot nose. Snot nose. Snot nose is a snotty nose. Um, what does that mean? Well, a snot nose, we call somebody a snot nose when they are too young. Okay, so for instance, um, it will happen, for instance, when somebody has a position, like he's a CEO of a company, but he's only 18 years old. Some people will say, okay, hey, hey, is nog een snot nurse. He is still too young uh, for that function. Uh, also, sometimes they will say it about toddlers or young children. Uh, they can also be snot nursing. So, a snot nurse is a snotty nose. It's also correct. But it means basically somebody who is young or too young for his current position. Then we go to the next one, and the next one is ijsberen. Um, sometimes we say in Dutch, je bent aan het ijsberen, of ik ben aan het ijsberen. And that literally means, I am polar bearing. Now, I haven't seen, I mean, I've been living in Belgium quite a bit. I go to the Netherlands from time to time. Um, I haven't seen any polar bear in our regions. Also, the behavior of ijsberen is basically walking up and down being anxious, uh, trying to figure out what you're going to do, but being a bit restless. Um, also, when I watch animal documentaries, um, I don't see polar bears going from the left to the right, um, pondering about what they're going to do, what their next move will do. So I think this one is a great candidate maybe when um, we had too much beer or when we were in a coffee shop in Amsterdam and we were maybe having a bit um, too much inspiration or too much imagination, so that's probably why we called it ijsberen. So als je ijsbeert, uh, that means that you're restless, you walk up and down, you don't know what to do, you're nervous. So in that case, in Dutch, we are polar bearing. 
Now, the next one is a baby bottle. All right, before you tell, if you see the translation and before you tell me, Ruben, you need Jesus, um, then basically a baby bottle is um, not a baby shot, not mostly gin. No, we don't give strong alcohol to our babies in Belgium. No, we don't do that in the Netherlands. It's basically um, a baby bottle is um, like a baby shower. So the baby's born, the parents invite the people over, to uh, have a bit of a party to you know to make it a festive occasion so again we do not give um, alcohol to our babies uh, in Belgium but we call it a baby bottle baby of course means baby bottle means a shot and it's uh, yeah, mostly a, a gin shot then we go to the next one uh, an boerenjaar an boerenjaar is a farmer's year what in you know what does that mean and uh, basically a boeren, a boer is a farmer, a jaar is year. A boeren jaar is when you had a very successful year. They will say it sometimes about uh, sport clubs, like for instance, uh, let's say a famous football team in Belgium is Anderlecht, or in the Netherlands, uh, Ajax Amsterdam, or any other, um, is basically Anderlecht had a boeren jaar. That means Anderlecht had a very good year, they won the title, they won the cup, and so on or even uh, business wise like for instance um, like ENG Bank, uh, ING Bank uh, in the Netherlands had a very good year, uh, ENG Bank had a boerenjaar, so a farmer's year. Alright and then geluksak, geluksak means a lucky bag? No, well a geluksak is basically somebody who uh, always has lady fortune on his side. Somebody um, who without much effort always gets into positive situations. So that would be our lucky bag. That would be our geluk zak. All right, we move on. Lui part, this one is a little bit more of a word play. Lui means lazy and then part means horse. Now, what is a lazy horse in Dutch? Well, it's an animal. It's also an animal. It's an animal which you can find in Africa and also a little bit in Asia. Um, and it's uh, a cat, it's uh, a feline, um, so basically uh, it's a leopard, all right? Lui part is a leopard, close to English, but lui means lazy, par means horse, all right? So uh, lui part. And then uh, piepschuim, piepschuim, uh, squeaky foam. What is squeaky foam? Uh, what is this? Well, basically, uh, for instance, imagine you order a fridge, right? And you get it in a cardboard box, and then there's always like a styrofoam um, protection around it. Well, that would be your piepschuim. That is styrofoam. Uh, piepschuim, squeaky foam. Why do we call it piepschuim? Well, basically, when you walk on it, when you touch it, sometimes it squeaks. So, there's logic to the madness. All right, and then the next one is kippenvel, chicken skin. Sometimes people will say, ik krijg er kippen wel van, you know, uh, it gives me ch literally chicken skin. Well, chicken skin or goose bumps. Now, if you look at your skin uh, when you have this kind of uh, physical state, when you're in this physical state, when you have goose bump, it does make a little bit of sense. So don't go thinking that all Flemish people and all Dutch people, they walk around with chicken skin. Nope, that is not really 100% correct. But for instance, if you hear a great song and you're moved by it and you get goosebumps from it, we would say, ik krijg kippen wel. And then basically this one is uh, one for the Dutch neighbors, uh, oranje gevoel. An oranje gevoel is an orange feeling. Now, what is a orange feeling. An orange feeling, uh, I like it a lot. I think it's a great form of, of unity, which you see in the Netherlands, is basically when there's a World Cup, World Cup of football, or when there's a great sports event, and there's many Dutch people who, who participate, um, like the whole Dutch nation gets together, they dress in uh, orange, and it's basically a feeling of, 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 of being Dutch or, or celebrating um, their support for, for that Dutch team or just uniting as a country. I think it's quite nice um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're quite famous. In every World Cup you see all the Dutch people together, they're always orange in uh, very um, original um, forms of, of, of dressing. Alright, so Oranje Gevoel is basically like a, an, an, a national Dutch sentiment uh, in a very positive way. So that is het Oranje Gevoel. 
All right, and then uh, we have toilet brill. Now, toilet glasses, okay, okay, okay. Get your minds out of the gutter. Um, we don't have and we don't use toilet grasses in uh, Belgium nor in the Netherlands, but a toilet brill is basically a toilet seat. Whoever came up with the word, again, I think the Belgian beer or maybe uh, the legalization of weed in the Netherlands had something to do with it. It's round, you can look through it, I don't know, but a toilet seat we call a toilet brill. All right, and then the next one, a shield toad. What is a shield toad? A schild pot. Now basically, a schild is a shield, a pot is a toad. What in the world would that be? Well, basically, that's a turtle, a turtle, and a schild pot is a turtle. <laughs> okay, then we go to the next one, and schoonmoeder. Schoonmoeder, very important person in the family, of course. Uh, schoonmoeder is a clean mother. Now, schoon is clean, and mother is mother. A clean mother. Well, that would be our mother-in-law, okay? Also, we say sometimes schoon family, family-in-law, the clean family, that is basically... Um, that part of the family. So your family-in-law would be your schoon family, your father-in-law would be your schoon father, and then your schoon mother would be um, your mother-in-law. Okay, well then we speak about buiten beentje, an outside leg. Tje is a diminutive, a small outside leg. What would that be? Well, basically a buiten beentje is somebody who lives outside of society of a group of people so we can call them outsiders or, or, or pariahs it's somebody who lives at the margin of a group or at the margin of society somebody who's a bit different so this is uh, in dutch an buiten beentje okay and then we go to the next one this one i like it's basically handschoenen hand shoes well in the netherlands we don't use gloves no we don't use gloves we put shoes on our hands and that is why we call them handschoenen so handschoenen uh, in english or um, gloves okay and then this one uh, is in bleekscheet now a bleekscheet if you translate it literally sorry for the translation is a pale fart now what is a Pale fart. Well, a pale fart is somebody, or can also be an animal, but it will be mostly for persons, is basically somebody who is very pale. It's a little bit of a derogative word. Um, it's close to an insult, um, and it means that, uh, well, somebody is very pale. So, Blake's hit, again, that would be literally translated, that would be a pale fart. Sorry again for my vocality. Um, or sorry again for my Dutch. Now, then we have um, olifantenhuid. Olifantenhuid is elephant skin, all right? You can say, hij heeft, olifanten, uh, hij heeft een olifantenhuid. So basically that means he has elephant skin. Now, what does that mean? It's basically somebody who can get a lot, who can get a lot of criticism and doesn't, you know, is not affected by it, doesn't feel anything uh, for it. Uh, and so on. So you've got thick skin if you have olifantenhuid. Then we go to the next one. Well, basically, if you go to the hairdressers in the Netherlands or Belgium, you are not going to the hairdressers, you are going to the chop chopping saloon. So basically, in Belgium, in the Netherlands, we don't cut your hair. As you can see, in my case, it's been completely chopped off. So uh, that would be the cap salon, that would be the chopping uh, saloon, cap salon, the hairdressers. Okay, and then we go to the next one and that would be a spiegelei. A spiegelei is a mirror egg. What is a mirror egg? Well, it's basically an egg which you bake in, the, in your pan and then uh, that would be um, a fried egg but sunny side up. Okay, that is a, a spiegelei and we call it a mirror egg. Um, in where I come from, in, 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 in Flanders, in West Flanders, we also sometimes call it a paardenoog, the eye of a horse, or a horse's eye. Um, so yeah, that would also be um, an option, but let's say a spiegel eye is a little bit more common uh, in the Dutch language. Alright, and then basically we have a vleermuis, vleermuis, a wing mouse. Flying mouse, well basically with a little bit of imagination you can guess that one. A flying mouse, that would be a bat. Vleermuis means a bat in, uh, in Dutch. 
And then we have the next one. The next one is Dudelzak. Doesn't really have any specific or weird translation. It, it's bagpipes. It means bagpipes. I like it a lot. I think it's a great word. Um, apparently, I checked out the origin of that word and Dudeln actually comes from German. So we had it from German. Dudeln in, you know, in that time means to make a mon monotonous sound um, for, um, for, a long, uh, for a long time. Um, so Dudelzak, it's a word I like a lot. I like the instrument, I like how it sounds. And that are the bagpipes. And then uh, we continue with a muggenzifter, a mosquito sifter. Now, what could that be, a mosquito sifter? Well, it's basically somebody who has an eye for detail and really finds details very, very, very important and who will argue quite a bit about this um, details. We have another one, but unfortunately I um, could not put it in uh, because I want to make my videos um, you know, child friendly. So basically, if you want to find the synonym for Muggenzefter, you know, Google it, you know, try to look for a, um, a synonym and you might be finally surprised which other word we have in Dutch for uh, persons who care a lot for detail and have a lot of opinion about these details and argue when the details have not been uh, correct or respected. Alright, and then basically we go to the next one, and the next one is clockhouse. Clock house. Clock house. Now, what is a clockhouse? Well, basically, if you take an apple, you eat the apple, you cut the apple, and then basically the middle of the apple, which we call the apple core, that is what we would call the clockhouse, uh, hut clockhouse, sorry, uh, in, in Dutch. So that would be the apple core. And then basically, if you're online, if you use the internet, sometimes if you speak to somebody who speaks Flemish or who speaks Dutch, you will hear Apenstaartje. So basically, they will give you their email address, um, uh, which will be Ruben, and then Apenstaartje, and then yahoo.com or gmail.com, uh, and so on. Now, Apenstaartje literally is a monkey tail. So I would say Ruben, monkey tail, uh, gmail.com. Now, what is Apenstaartje, Apenstaartje would be your ad. So at gmail.com, Apenstaartje, gmail.com. So basically, uh, again, uh, on a great uh, Saturday evening with maybe one or two deliriums or duvels too much, we looked at the ad and we said, hmm, this looks like a monkey tail, so let's call it a monkey tail. I think that must be the origin. So basically, I want to thank you again um, for watching another video of Dutch round one. I hope this one uh, you found funny, you found some value in it. Um, again, if you enjoy these videos, give it a like, remember to subscribe, write down in the comments. Um, if you're struggling with something in Dutch, I can help you out. I'll make a video about it to make your life and your language learning process easier. And as for me, um, the only thing I want to say is, as always, keep it 100. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for another episode of Dutch Round 1.